المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Please, at any time you want to use the microphone. Welcome you all to the opening ceremony of the 2021 All Nigeria Judges Conference. It is also for me a singular honor and uncommon privilege to especially welcome His Excellency, the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal open despite his tight schedule. Your Excellency, my lords, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me briefly state that uh, the All Nigeria Judges Conference is organized biennially by the National Judicial Institute as part of its statutory mandate under its Establishment Act. Among other things, this conference affords members of the bench an opportunity for sober reflection, close interaction, brother judges, and a chance to arrive at common resolutions that will better reposition the judiciary to improve the quality of justice delivery in Nigeria and provide more access to justice for all. The theme of this year's conference, that is promoting judicial excellence in the administration of justice, is apt. It is very relevant to the situation that the Nigerian judiciary finds itself today. It is a theme that adequately addresses the aspiration of all stakeholders in the administration of justice and high standards of adjudication that our fellow citizens expect. Like any other institution, there are undoubtedly numerous challenges for the judiciary. Nevertheless, with our collective efforts, I'm confident that they are easily surmountable. It is therefore imperative to revisit those time-tested ethical values with which the judiciary is associated. We must all be aware of the fact that the speedy and the thorough determination of the questions placed before us help to ensure the stability of this country its democratic values and the practices, and ultimately its future. Consequently, we must rise to the challenge and restore public confidence in our ability to dispense justice without fear or favor, align with our knowledge and understanding of the law and the highest dictates of our conscience. Your Excellency, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to say that the judiciary has performed creditably well and served our motherland to the best of our ability. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, most of us deserve an applause as we have done so. for the extra efforts that we have put in, despite enormous challenges, such as the coronavirus pandemic, which hampered all activities in our country and globally. I make bold to say, Father, that if not for the timely intervention of the Nigerian judiciary, our present democratic status would have probably collapsed and fallen like a pack of ill-managed cats. <laughs> However, greater effort is required on our part to demonstrate 
our sincerity of purpose to the public, who are our primary constituents and assessors. Having said that, I should not be misunderstood to be saying that we do not need to accelerate a convergence on divergent views to facilitate the growth, development, and improvement of the judiciary. This has become necessary and imperative if one considers the daunting fact that among the judiciaries in the Commonwealth in particular, perhaps none is as burdened, encumbered, harassed, inundated, <laughs> and overstretched with political cases and disputations at the Nigerian judiciary. Indeed, greater effort is required on our part to demonstrate our sincerity of purpose to the public who are our primary constituents and assessors. It does not matter even if it will take us from 9 o'clock to about 7 o'clock or even 10 o'clock in the night. All we are after is to see that cases are decided effectively within time, and we have been doing so. <laughs> the point must be straight away made that judges should be seen as persons within the legal profession who possess the extraordinary character, culture, trait, patience, intelligence, knowledge, dynamism, and virtues to adjudicate honestly and impartially among contending and disputing parties. It is therefore not a surprise that section six, subsection six of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, solely and squarely vests judicial powers and authority in the superior course of record created by the Constitution. This honor is responsibility of ensuring justice requires us to squarely address the challenges confronting the administration of justice. Rest assured, there is a determined resolve on our side to face these challenges squarely and ensure that the ethics of the bench are complied with by all judicial officers in Nigeria. It is also the desire of the citizenry that justice must be done without delay at all times and be seen to have been done. With the corrupt judiciary, this can never be accomplished. This is why erudite jurist Toby JSCSC was sometimes declared that um, a judge, by the nature of his position and professional calling, is expected to be straightforward, upright, diligent, consistent, and open in whatever he does in court and in other places of human endeavors that he happens to find himself. This is because his character as a judge is a public property. He is the cyanosia of the entire adjudication in the court. And like Caesar's wife of the ancient tomb, he is expected to live above board and above suspicion if the judicial process should not experience any adverse or suffer detriment. A judge should know that by the nature of his judicial functions, he is persistently and consistently on trial for any improper conduct immediately before, during, and after the trial of a case. 
It is therefore our collective responsibility to ensure a continuous, independent, strong, respected, and respectable judiciary for the impartial administration of justice. All judicial officers must actively participate in establishing, maintaining, enforcing, and observing high standard of conduct so that the integrity and respect for the independence of the judiciary is sustained. This is why the conference options has the chance to collectively strategize and tackle the problems of court uh, inefficiencies, poor infrastructure and the condition of service, decay of intellectual capacity and corruption. These setbacks, among others, have served to disrupt full efficiency of the judiciary and its perception by the general public. A lot will agree with me that these must be effectively nipped in the bud. Your Excellency, my brother judges, ladies and gentlemen, we must confess that our fellow citizens are not entirely satisfied with our performance. The perception is of an inefficient, slow, and at times tainted judiciary, and the task is ours to rebut this largely erroneous perception. A judge can only inspire confidence in the judicial process if he in addition to being impartial, is seen to be incorruptible. The judicial officer is respected because he respects himself. When he descends into a lower sphere and takes a partisan position, he is open to criticism as any other person, and such criticism may lower the dignity of the bench and tarnish the image of the judiciary. As judges, we must act according to the highest decorum and dictates of our conscience. We also must be guided by the fundamental values and the principles of constitutional democracy, as well as the values of simple decency. Our judgments and the pronouncements must not disappear to be against the essence of justice. Surely, the application of these broad principles cannot produce judgments that appear unfair and unjust. As judges, the determination of the questions placed before us regulate and stabilize this great nation, protects its democratic values and the practices and ultimately its future. Consequently, we must rise to the challenge and restore public confidence in our judicial system, system by desisting from giving incessant expertise orders that have portrayed the judiciary in bad light. We have taken steps at the National Judicial Council to address the issue of granting incessant expertise applications and will continue to ensure that our judicial officers carry out their duties in line with the codes of conduct for judicial officers. The scale of justice is fair and equitable. Thus, I urge my lords to realize that stringent application of procedural rules and technicalities do not lead to the attainment of substantial justice. Uh, this is clearly against the modern perception of justice. We must therefore do substantial justice through the rigorous application of the law as it is and not as we perceive it to be. Your Excellency, uh, distinguished Vice President, 
my respected justices here present, other participants, let me assure you and the entire nation that the judiciary has sufficient capacity and will to correct whatever ills that exist within it, apply all the required rules and the regulations which will accentuate us into one of the most judiciaries in the world. Without appearing to contradict myself, I yield to the fact that it may be difficult for the judiciary to be impartial and objective in a democracy where it remains financially tied to the executive. It is right that the foundation of impartiality is independence. Let the judiciary get its own independence. We are making this statement into the very rapt ears of those that be who are seated here with us. And uh, luckily enough for us, the man seated with us happens to not only be one of us, but very neatly knitted into us. He knows the court very well not because of just some few years back, he was appearing before us. We talk with him, and we are sure he is ever ready to continue talking and helping us. <laughs> this issue of funding the judiciary Your Excellency and my Lord, here present, has continued to pose serious challenge to the institution. Uh, let me first publicly acknowledge and thank His Excellency, through His Excellency, the Vice President, the President of the Federation, for his complete obedience to the Constitution in relation to the finding of federal judicial, uh, funding of the federal judiciary, the negotiation driven by the Ministry of Labor between Jocelyn and the Governor's Forum under the directive of the President is quite commendable, though many have signed by complying with the agreement. We appreciate this support. I hereby report, though on a sad note, that very few states have implemented the agreement entered into in June. While the Constitution specifically mandates that all monies due to the judiciary should be given to the heads of the courts. Such provisions are complied with more in breach than in obedience. Majority of the heads of courts will go cap in hand to the governors to be begging for what is constitutionally due to them. A judge, however small, whether a magistrate, 
whether a customary court judge, however small, is not supposed and should not be seen begging. Please give us what is due to us. Our respected Vice President, it is not because you are here, but whether you are here or not, you are part, a very solid part and parcel of us. We don't have any further to lay our complaints to better than your own self, sir. We thank you for coming to listen to this task observation. Now, I urge the state governors to emulate the federal government by ensuring that the provision of section 121, subsection 3 of the Constitution is fully adhered to and implemented. I also urge the governors of all the states of the Federation to remember that the judiciary cannot be regarded as being independent unless it can adequately, and the word, underline the word adequately, meet its needs without not to, uh, without bowing to the pressure of those that it be. Financial independence is not just desirable, but it is crucial, vital, imperative, and constitutional. We all have a duty to ensure that a repeat of the recent Justin strike is averted. We wouldn't want it anymore. The Nigerian judiciary, like all other arms of government and the sectors of the economy, was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. But I'm glad to say that the judiciary has overcome its effects by embracing modern technology and the discharge of our constitutional responsibility. Through the use of virtual hearings on various platforms, as well as guidelines for the use of same, we have and will continue to do justice to all matters before us, thereby engendering greater efficiency in the work we do as judicial officers. The issue of corruption will continue to be in the front banner of our national discourse. And the time passed, a mention of corruption in the judiciary was an anathema. That was, however, then. It will not amount to a grand deceit and the fallacy to assert that there are no bad acts even within the judiciary. This issue and the others are currently being adequately addressed. Towards this end, efforts are ongoing to reposition and strengthen the National Judicial Council for the effective discharge of its statutory mandate. I believe that with our collective efforts and consistent dedication to our duties, we shall fight this canker worm with renewed vigor, and by the grace of God Almighty, we shall prevail and give Nigerians the judiciary that they rightly deserve. Your Excellency, my lords, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, permit me at this juncture 
to express our profound appreciation to Mr. President uh, through the Vice President for honoring our invitation to have the caliber of person such as the Vice President of the whole Federation to come personally to witness this our conference and to declare the open. It is respect for the judiciary in no small measure, and we appreciate that. I note and recognize the presence of uh, half some governors here. Your Excellencies, whether they are here physically or represented, please accept a profound appreciation for making time out of your schedule to this to attend this uh, opening ceremony. In the same vein, I thank the Honorable Minister of the Federal uh, Capital Territory Administration, members of the National Assembly, and indeed many of our retired, but certainly not tired, judicial officers who have come to join and the guide us to chart a new course for the sustenance of the ethics of the judiciary. I thank all invited faculty members and chairmen of sessions for accepting our invitation. It is our hope that in deliberating various issues at this conference, we will explore your expertise, experience, to address fundamental challenges affecting our judicial system and practical solutions. Distinguished uh, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that you will find the discussions stimulating and enlightening. I wish you all fruitful deliberations and the present stay in Abuja. It is my singular honor and privilege to invite His Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to give us maybe a word or two, or if need be, three. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.